This episode of MMA Notes is brought to you by Nectar Sleep, the last mattress you'll ever need and one of the best mattresses I've ever slept on. Save $350 off any mattress with code GWFIT. ButcherBox, get high quality meat delivered. Get a free gift with your order by following the link below. Liquid Web, one of the top hosting providers around. Save 55% off hosting for three months with code BIGFOOT. Purity Coffee, organic certified, high in antioxidants and free of contaminants. Save 20% off with code MMA20. Defense Soap, everyday soaps for everybody. Use code MMA Nuts to save 15% off your order. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, <laughs> episode 601. 601. My name is Ingo Weigel. Matt Groove, MMA Show. Buy my fans, for my fans, walk the line between serious and ridiculous. What's going on? Tings, tings be happening. We talk about them tings later. But I see you have your Blackhawks uh, <laughs> mug cup. I should have worn my glass. Oh my god, where, where do I start? And go. They trade Patrick King Patrick. today for basically a bag of used pucks. They got to, a fucking to the Rangers. Yep. Yeah, it was like some kind of three way gangbang or something. I think Arizona was involved. The Hawks get a second round pick, a fourth round pick, and the second round pick can become a first round. I think if Mm -hmm. the Rangers make it into the Eastern conference finals or some bullshit, but anyway, let me just say this. Patrick Kane fucked us. Fuck that guy. (laughs) I love that guy, but fuck that guy because he was so he ho hum. I don't know if I want to be traded. I don't know how I feel. I, he, cause he has a full no trade clause. And then I think what happened is he said, I only want to go to the Rangers and the Rangers just made a big play for some other player. So they basically didn't have a lot of assets to trade for him. And they're doing all sorts of fucking gymnastics with their salary cap and how much space they had available. And it had got another team involved to absorb some of the Patrick's salary, but Kane fucked us. Cause he could have just said, months ago like hey i'd like to be traded i'd like to go to the rangers and we could have fucking extorted them for numerous number one draft picks so basically they stole patrick kane and the way our gm is selling it is oh we just did patrick kane a solid and yeah we yeah, didn't get 16 what we years should've. time served you know i mean uh, i get it but he still fucked us and more than likely he'll resign with us next year <laughs> because unless he loves it too much in New York, he just, he, we're basically just letting him go there to try to win the cup and we'll yeah, see what happens. Getting you know, some future potential shit. And you know, you never know. Hopefully. Yeah. Cause he's got no contract at the end of the year. So he could potentially come back on the cheap he and could. finish well, his career as a Blackhawk. I was looking at this. So three Stanley cups, like a thousand games or something like that. Yeah, he's got like twelve hundred something games. Yeah, like twelve hundred points, four hundred goals, and just a shitload of awards. Uh, the GM called him one of the greatest Blackhawks players in club history. I think we agree. Um, so I don't know. It's maybe it's a smart move. Maybe they get rid of him and then get him back. Like, because who fucking cares about this season? We suck anyway. So no, because we want to be in last place. That is the point of this yes. season. Because you want to get that dude, Bedard, or whatever the fuck his name yeah, is. He's supposed hopefully. to be like the next goddamn Wayne Gretzky, you know. No, oh, geez. Yeah. It's no and it's pressure. no bullshit. It's like, I don't know what pace he's going off at, but it's like three points per game or something ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and there's like three or four guys that are really fucking good, but he is so far elite level above everyone else that will change your franchise. So whoever gets him is going to be fucking, mm-hmm. at least on a ticket sale basis, you're going to sell a shit ton of tickets because that fucker's exciting. So anyway, that's going on. Now, and there's no Bears talk. I don't think there's anything happening yet with that. We're still too soon. Yeah, I think uh, I thought I read something today that said they are definitely going to try to get rid of that number one pick and keep Fields, which, you know, Neither here nor there. Makes sense. I, I guess that makes sense. He's got an opportunity to be a pretty big star if he stays healthy. So uh <laughs> yeah. Any, any other depressing Chicago news before we get into some MMAs? Well, uh the mayor just lost her bid for re-election. I guess that's a positive though. 
She yes. didn't seem like the best mayor. So she's probably getting her hair done like she did during COVID. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Beetlejuice. Right? Yeah. And let's talk about we got a big fucking UFC card this weekend. Yes. Maybe the biggest one ever. UFC. Or at least in a little while. 286. Well, I read an interesting the uh, 285 stat. or 286? 286, right? 285. Um 285. Sorry. Um it's uh I read something that said that, and I, I can't verify if this is true, but there was a a, a site, a, a sports site that said that the average ticket prices rank as the highest in sports only behind the Super Bowl, according to a study done by slots on oh, there you go, slots online Canada. The average ticket price to attend will be the highest for any event in 2023 behind only Super Bowl, whatever the fuck it was, at $4,460 per ticket. What? It's crazy. That sounds blasphemous. I agree. Well, probably the uh, average, the average price being because John Jones, you know, I think true, maybe, I mean, the, maybe the, those up close seats are like ridiculous expense. And now all I think right now, all life entertainment is insanely expensive because of like I was reading stories about entertainers, large entertainers doing stadium tours and not able to break even because they're so expensive to like bring equipment in and do all this shit. Really? Go, yeah, because of COVID, it fucked everything up. So well, and then think about chains. like how far out everything was too. Like when everything got shut down, if you didn't book your shit, like if you were an entertainer right away, you're kind of shit out of luck because everyone's yeah. vying for the venues that have opened. Mm-hmm. Like, holy fuck. Yeah, I'm going to pull up uh, UFC 285 on StubHub and see what the cheapest ticket available is. So right now uh section 104 i don't know where this is is 336 dollars is that nosebleeds that looks like the cheapest ticket right now is 336 huh holy fuck yeah that's no joke it's crazy expensive. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like i think we were paying like a hundred bucks for semi decent ones like 10 13 years ago something like that mm-hmm. fuck me man yeah live entertainment is obscene right now any sort of doesn't matter if it's stand-up freaking sebastian maniscalco i try to go see him at the at the united center it nosebleeds like 400 section or whatever the top is it's like 300 dollars. i'm like dude that's Insane. nuts you can't even see the guy you need binoculars it's so far away so it's like i'll just pay for the special it doesn't make any sense who the hell wants to be there live for that but um, all right. So let let's talk about what. Where do you want to start? Well, there's so much. So yeah, much. I guess we we'll just start with the main event: John Jones and Cyril Gan. Like, I'll say this: I I watched the two embedded shows for the fight, and it shows Gan doing some training, and it shows John Jones just swimming, sitting in a hot tub, and going in the sauna. So I forgot who who else had theorized this that is John injured because he's just doing my first like thought. low yep. impact shit, which is kind of fucking weird. Because typically, but I, I have seen John doing sparring footage on his own. So maybe he's told the embedded crew that you guys aren't allowed to film me doing sparring or any mm-hmm. kind of striking. All you can get film me doing is bullshit. Yeah. Which is a possibility. Mm-hmm. Yep. And looking at those shows, I'm like, Jesus Christ, John looks thick, like Big. supplemented thick. Yep. So I don't know, because the other rumor was like he's been out for three years. Did he potentially have a USADA issue? Because there was that point where USADA said, we're not going to make everything public anymore. So maybe John served some sort of suspension in the background, a la Conor McGregor, uh, suspension in the background. But I think Conor wasn't even fucking tested. I don't know how long John wasn't tested for, but he sure as shit looks like he's on some kind he of gear, swole. allegedly. Yes. Well, I mean, here's the thing. He's he's 35, right? Hasn't fought in, what, three years yeah. and then some. Um, first time at heavyweight. So, um, 
you know, I, I'm very curious to see how this extra bulk plays cardio wise, plays speed wise, plays wrestling explosive wise. Like, and and is he going to be able to do it for five rounds? Like, I I, I don't know. There's so many questions. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. We know what Gon's capable of, you know. Um, he's yeah, a tough and then dude. One of the embeddeds too. They're throwing like bricks in the deep end of a pool. And then John's swimming down, picking up the brick. And then like his coach is joking around and saying, well, remember at the beginning of camp, you couldn't even swim to the bottom and pick one of these up. So I don't know if they're playing like bullshit with us and trying to fuck with us. Cause I think gone was doing the same thing saying something along the lines. I don't know if I have it. I've got a quote here. Let me pull this up. He's talking about his training. He's like, I'm lazy. That's the truth. I only train when a fight is announced. I had my fight against uh, Tui Vasa, barely trained since then. Now I'm back at it since the John Jones fight has been announced. So, and I think John was even saying this too. Like, I think they're both playing some kind of mental games with I'm not training. You're not training. Who can train at least? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, John obviously can because he beat Gustafson <laughs> with zero training, just coke and hookers and maybe the occasional hit and run accident. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who knows? But well, here's some more some more stats that I found. Mm-hmm. So um 18 fight unbeaten streak at the light heavyweight um division. Um, it's the longest in company history, unbeaten. Um his 20 uh, light heavyweight victories are the most in divisional history. Um, let's see. There's there's some more. Um, he defeated seven fighters who once held a belt. The most of any fighter. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think artist. anybody else has done that. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. It's a tough uh, schedule of fights, yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know. There's more shit, but... Um, he has a uh, eight consecutive UFC title defenses, um, which is fourth longest in the in the, the UFC behind Anderson, Anderson Silva, Jose, GSP, GSP, and, GSP. and G- Demetrius Johnson. Jose oh. L is not not on the list, so Should Mighty be, Mouse. Yeah. Yep. Um, his uh, four UFC title defenses in a year span between 2011 of fall and 2022 of of. T- Oh, sorry, of 2000 of 2012, like the year, are the most by any champion in modern UFC history. So, I mean, here's the thing. Like, this is odd for me because I feel like when John was fighting, he was fighting a lot. Like, he was active. And now he's not fought in three-some years. Like, I know that there's no, no ring rust, but I remember, was it OSP where you looked a little... Um, he looked a little rusty in that one, if I recall mm-hmm. coming back, right? So I don't know. Gone has been like, you know, he's been going at it and he's in the mix and he's big dude, big strong guy. I don't know. I think I think I think he could knock John out. I think it could happen. It's possible. yeah, I mean it's heavyweight and technically Cormier was a heavyweight when he's fighting him at a light heavyweight, but <clears throat> it's also the things that worry me about John besides like the amount of time he's been off is a huge problem. The quality of training partners right now. Cause he's not, he got basically got kicked out of Greg Jackson, uh, Winkle John. I think he had an issue with Winkle John and now he's training at Henry Cejudo's and he's got all these like lower tier heavyweights that he's training with. So I don't think that's helpful <laughs> unless he's brought in higher level guys um, and then again, moving up to another weight class and to legitimately get hit by guys that are trying to take your head off. I mean, God's going to try to take your head off. So issues there. And then on the gone side, like how does he handle John Jones's takedowns? Like, I think that's where John has the advantage is the wrestling. And I always said, like, if John goes up to heavyweight, he should wrestle fuck these guys. And then the the challenge at at heavyweight for him would be, like, Curtis Blades. Like, that would be a tough fight, too. I I think Mm -hmm. Gon, Miocic, and Curtis Blades are the toughest fights at heavyweight for John. Yeah. But if – and then you got to think about what are the things that John does that are – 
semi-controversial. How about an eye poke when the things aren't going right? That happens almost nine out of 10 fights with John. Oblique kicks to the fucking knee all the time, right? And then whatever other weird thing he can do. But watching the embedded, the other thing that showed John do, in which I think the Greg Jackson kind of instilled in him was watching your opponent's fights and game planning from that. And he was doing that. And he's like, I don't understand how guys don't do this, what I'm doing right now. I'm like, exactly. You should be watching all of that guy's like last three, four fights and seeing what his tendencies are and seeing what you can pick up. And that may be an advantage for John also, like, cause gone hasn't seen John fight in three years. So he has no idea what new shit he's incorporated. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's all these pros and cons and it's like, fuck, like at the end of the day, I have to pick John and it may be a weird split decision because <clears throat> you know he's gonna he's gonna have ring rust regardless it's that's just mm-hmm. i think is a fact I, like yes some guys don't some guys do i think moving up to heavyweight i think he's gonna be semi-cautious i don't think he's gonna be talking crazy in the embedded he's like oh yeah when i fought shogun i came out and threw a flying knee and then i'm fucking just blah 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 I don't I don't know if that's the oh, case. Yeah. I think he's super cautious. It could be a real shitty fight. I can't see that happening against Gan because Gan's dangerous, you know, and he's not right. he's he fought I know it's been a while for him too, but not 3 years. So it's like um like what 5 6 months whatever. Um yeah, I agree with you cuz we don't know what's going to happen with John. I do right. think that the bleak kick isn't going to work as well at the heavyweight division, just in my opinion. Um well, I think it does just cuz you kick someone in the knee you kick someone in the i I think it's a weak joint so what especially is the counter for that i think what do you gotta do step forward and just uppercut his ass or what i think it's move out of the way yeah yeah i don't know i'm excited about this one i think it's going to be interesting to see what happens i I, i'm i know i've always talked shit about john but i'm i'm rooting for him because it's a good story if he can come back and not be a dick afterward that'd be nice <laughs> you know what i mean you want you want him to have he's, success and be reformed and he's be always champ. an asshole he just is it's so, just the same thing like him bisbing yeah you know, but he's trying to make, he's there. trying to make nice with cormier you know so it's like maybe he's turning a new leaf <laughs> i'm not buying it it's it this is what he does every time he's like i'm a good guy i'm a good guy and he just fucks you right up the ass I think he's still in Albuquerque right now. He's probably waiting to the last day, which is probably a good thing because you don't need like John Jones is on a bender and some fucking strip club, you know. He hasn't exercised all his demons yet, and Vegas is not a good place for uh, no, he needs John to Jones. Stay away. Yeah. He's like Dennis Rodman, you know. You, you can't have him go to Vegas before the fight. He's got he's got to <laughs> right. <laughs> like just drive in, like. Uh, the night or something or the day mm-hmm. but he probably has to do all the press shit so he's probably gonna get there uh shortly so <sighs> are we both picking john here i i think i have to i i can't i can't pick gone i i i disagree with this that the way it's gonna work out though i think john catches i if i think john can finish gone i don't think this goes to a decision i think somebody's finishing somebody so i'm, I'm predicting a ko in like the second round i hope it's so gonna, it's gonna be exciting and first round might be a little you know it may i'm curious to know if john still has the fight iq like is this going to translate to the heavyweight division is he going to be able yeah. to adjust and try to figure things out and how cautious is he, is he coming out like well the like other Spider-Man? thing man if he's you know? been all like sauced up he may come out super aggressive because i think i think that was part of the change in john too was like you add usada into the equation and yeah he's probably still fucking around with some shit but there was a marked difference in the amount of aggressiveness in some of these fighters. And John Jones had a marked difference in the amount of aggressiveness. He was a lot more passive. And then hence why you had all these decisions. And Mm -hmm. I think with him too, the lack of challenge and the lack of his training. So I think him moving up the heavyweight, like he said too, he's scared. And it's the first time he's been scared in a long time. So I hope there's fireworks. I just, I, I feel like there's a level of cautiousness because he's talking about his legacy and his name. 
Mm-hmm. So I, that worries me about extending the fight to like, oh, I, I don't want to lose. So him fighting to to not lose versus fighting to win. Like I need him to fight to win. Yes, I agree. You know? to, to keep it exciting. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. And then they said Sergey Pavlich is the backup for this fight if someone happens to miss weight, but I don't think either of these guys is going over 265 because I think no. Max they're both 250. John said he wasn't even cutting weight; he was just going in the sauna to like be back in that ritual of like I gotta suffer somewhat to know that it's fight time. Yes. And I think maybe he needs to break up a robbery or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a few babies. Yeah. Like, I think he did that before one of his title fights. Like, yeah, John Jones fucking prevented a robbery. You tracked mm-hmm. out a robber. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. That's John doing John shit. And then let's, I'm going to pull up the rest of the card because I think the card is kind of dog shit. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, the, the one, Shevchenko versus Alex Agrasso. One thing I, um, I no, uh, just want to mention there is that uh, Grasso is the first Mexican born woman to challenge for a UFC championship belt. That seems so. crazy. I, I thought that was that was like a Didn't wrong stat, Henry but... Cejudo own the belt. I don't know. Isn't he a Mexican born woman? He, he might be. But <laughs> MMA junkie posted that out. No, yeah, I yeah. tried to fact check that and it seems accurate. So it's it's like, all right, she's trying to open the door for all the Mexican women who are coming up behind her. So including maybe Henry Cejudo. I don't I don't know. Yeah. So. I think he's fighting for the title <laughs> very shortly again. Yes. Who knows? Uh so I mean the rest of the card is just eh. Uh, you know, it's like you got to. This one is one of those where you got to buy the UFC just because John, it's you John gotta, Jones. But I'm kind of annoyed that they did this because literally there's like not a single other good fight on the well, card. Well, right? yeah, I mean, they fucked us. I mean, you can kind of, I'm scrolling through here. And the weird one is like you're going to put Cody Garbrandt on the prelims. Like he was a former champion. Yep. Derek Brunson, Amanda Rebus, she's hot. She's on the fucking prelims. Like, see, that's how I judge fights. Uh, she's hot, should be on the main card, but and then let's uh, no picture a bunch of people, you know, yes. typical for a UFC. So, this normal, he's normal. I'm fucking psyched. John Jones, it's gonna be great. You should win. Um, speaking of which, we should probably talk about some sponsor action. Yes. Well, Manscaped. Manscaped. I'm going to roll it. Yes. Breaking news. Do, do, Man- do, 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 do. <laughs> Manscaped is now selling beard products. That's right. They've gone from waist to face to help you replace oh. that bulky. You can't see the waist, but I, I was down there. Nice. But, but the bulky razor with their brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Manscaped helped you get the golden rod of a Greek god. And now they've created the best tools for you to turn your the head best. <laughs> A clean, perfectly groomed and condition. I feel like I should trademark that. And condition beard. Finally, tame your mane by going to manscaped.com slash MMA nuts for 20% off plus free shipping. That's right. This kit is about to change your motherfucking life. That's exactly how it's written. That's exactly how I read it. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit has made it easier for, than ever to craft your signature look. This kit will take your facial hair anywhere from Gandalf to totally bear. So get 20% off and free shipping with our code at not our code. You can get it at manscaped.com slash MMA nuts. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash MMA nuts. The Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the premier solution to face grooming. That's right. And even if you need below the waist grooming, you can also get that with their regular trimmer. I mean, they have everything. So if That's it's right. hairy and, and you're a man, <laughs> you, you're, you're all set. And or a woman, fucking just get that shit and take it down I mean, a notch or don't. Buy one for your mom. I'm, That's right. Or someone else's mom. I don't know. That's right. So speaking of which, let's talk about our other sponsor, uh, mm-hmm. Miracle Brand. Hey, whether we're going to get uh, more fit, be a better parent, or get more done at work, there is one thing that will help. And that's better sleep, which I struggle with habitually. 
Uh, with Miracle Made Sheets, you can tap into the power of self cooling temperature regulation. It's almost like a nut sack, uh, which has been shown to improve sleep quality by up to 34%. And with the self-cooling properties, uh, you can get better quality sleep using silver-infused fabrics originally developed by NASA. Yeah, same people that launched shit into space. Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get a better sleep, better sleep every night. Now you're being like me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> They're infused with natural silver, prevent 99% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresher three times longer than other sheets. No more disgusting odors. That's right. Oh, fuck up vampires and werewolves. So go to trymiracle.com slash MMA. That's trymiracle.com slash MMA. Try it today. We've got a special deal for our listeners. You can save 40% off. Be sure to use our promo code MMA at checkout to save even more and get a three free towels. And Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't, 1 million percent or maybe even 100 percent satisfied you get a full refund upgrade for sleep with miracle made go to try miracle.com slash mma and use the code mma to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40 percent off again that's try miracle.com slash mma to treat yourself and thank you miracle made for sponsoring this episode we love and you that's right and back to the show it's like a nut sack. I'm sure they'll love that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little Ultimate Fighter. I got a bunch of shit. So yeah, go ahead. All right. First picture is revealed of Michael Chandler's little repertoire. We have yeah. from left to right our grappling specialist Robert Drysdale, Ryan Bader, which I'm not. He just looks cool with his tattoos. Mm -hmm. And then you have Jason just one Stroud. arm though. Fuck, <laughs> fuck the other arm. <laughs> and wrestling coach Greg Jones. Um, this is my jerk off arm. This is my non jerk off yeah. I mean, arm. I'm not sure. Chandler's always like hiking his shorts up. I don't know if that's all necessary, but I, I get it. They're they're tough. You know, it's it's cool. Looks a little gay, but hey, whatever. Looks a little gay. And then even in even more news, there's also the first photo revealed of the notorious Conor McGregor at the Ultimate Fighter situation, which there's some controversy apparently because I don't know. I guess he kicked some people off. Look, look at him. He's got the cowboy hat. Doing his all things. Got the... What the fuck is he wearing that <laughs> while he's coaching? I think he is. He can fuck but himself. His face right is, off. His, his head has gotten huge. Here's Chandler, and there's Connor again. I mean, he, wow, look at this. He dude. doesn't even look like the same guy. Like I don't. I don't. I mean, well, I think some people are saying a lot of drugs, a lot of partying. And then there's another picture I'll share here of him and Wonder Boy next to each other. Oh, wow. It is insane, like how big Connor is. Holy Jesus! He like looks huge. Like I don't know how Connor's gonna make 170. He's if not. Wonder Boy's fighting 170, Connor's got to be like 185 right there. And it's well, not like the like Connor's forward and like he's like an three inches forward so he shouldn't look that much bigger than wonder boy that's insane well, it, even even his face like it he looks a, like well, he's a water buffalo different person you know yeah he's, like, he's jacked to the tits with all sorts of uh yeah that's what happens your head swells when you're on I, the shit i might actually watch this for the first time in years might actually watch a season of the ultimate fighter for a few episodes just to see what happens i think it kicks off in august or something so I'm somewhat excited. Could be interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing that was weird, someone, this is still on Connor. I don't know where he's at. I'm assuming he's at the show and I'll post this. Why, why is he shadow boxing in his suit? <laughs> we know guys like this. <laughs> They're like, Hey man, did you see the fights last night? And then he just gets up and starts shadow boxing. <laughs> He likes his suits. I mean, I get it, but you, you watch your footwork, and then he's like out of breath already. It's like, I'm tired. Ah, too much. Too spent much. my shit. He's hopping and puffing. Good Lord, <laughs> good Lord okay. dude. If you're out of shit, you should have really good cardio. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, yeah, I might watch that. I mean, that's going to be a hell of a fight because both guys 
th- that's another one where they're out there to finish you. Mm-hmm. Chandler more so, but like they're not gonna fuck around. That first round's gonna be <laughs> insane. And especially Connor, like I wanna see like is he gonna be throwing kicks? Because if that leg got destroyed, there's gotta be something in there mentally to like, man, I don't know if I want to uh, throw yeah. or take kicks. And if I'm Chandler, I am fucking that broken leg up. I am going after that leg. Take I'm gonna down, test you. kick him, punch it. You'd be punching yeah. that leg. <laughs> Just whatever. I'm going to bite that fucker. <laughs> yes. That, that did happen over a week. I, like, uh, I think on the UFC card, like one fighter bit another fighter. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> like, whatever. These things happen in MMA and go. They sure do. Uh, what else is happening out there? Uh, Ronda Rousey, um, kind of still in the mix with when it comes to MMA. She's a big proponent of this MMA pension bill that's getting uh, potentially put in front of the California, uh, I guess, state voters, Congress, whoever the fuck's doing whatever. Some sort um, of legislature. Yeah, that basically, she's saying that, you know, MMA is a tough sport and boxing has something. They need to have something for MMA. And if the bill passes, it looks like around a million dollars or a dollar from every, not a million dollars, one dollar from every ticket sold in California for for any MMA event will go towards the pension fund. Um, Because apparently they host more combat sports than any other state. So um, I'm wondering if this is actually going to go and how what your thoughts are on it. Do you think this is good? I don't understand how it works. Like it goes into a pension fund, but. Who gets it then? Only fighters that have fought in California? Because it seems like it needs to be a federal thing. And like, when would you be able to get a piece of that pension? Do you have to have, it sounds like you need to have X amount of fights in a professional yeah. fighting league, like call it UFC, Bellator, one or PFL. I'd, I would probably hit those four and you'd have to have, there's got to be some sort of, at least 10 fights in one of those organizations. Cause if you're just like doing all these pie shoots, even though you're a pro, I don't know. It, it just it doesn't seem shouldn't right. be entitled. Yeah. I don't know how it's going to work. I like the idea of it. So, and I like that someone high profile is supporting it. It's just, I don't know how it's going to get implemented, but anything that helps the fighters is always a good thing. I agree. Just bring back sponsorships. Come on, mm-hmm. fucking UFC, you greedy fucks. What? Never you gonna can't say that. <laughs> and then the other thing I saw, like over the weekend, Jake Paul took his first loss to Tommy Fury. We have two pro boxers that are that have amateur level skills going at it. Mm-hmm. And uh First time it didn't work out for Jake. And I think Tommy had a massive reach advantage. I think he had like a 80 inch. I think he's got like a John Jones type of reach. Because when oh, you wow. look at it, I'm like, fuck. I only saw highlights. I didn't see the fight, but yeah, these things happen when you fight like a real boxer. But I mean, it's it's also you could have an off night because I mean he did KO Tyron Woodley. True. Right? True. Yeah. Did KO yeah. Ben Askren. I mean, that's not saying much, but um, he's got power. He's got some skill, but it's just uh, not at the level. But I don't know. Do you think that hurts him in the long run? No. Like, is that still like, does he still have viable fights against like a Nate Diaz or yeah. anybody else out there? I think it legitimizes him somewhat. I think by taking a loss, if he can, because yeah. this isn't like, the old days of boxing where you have to be no. undefeated a hundred and oh like no like i i think he took a loss and if he comes back and wins now it's like okay these fights are not fixed because it almost makes it if he can keep winning after this it almost makes it seem like it's real you know it's not just like a pay to be ko'd kind of thing yeah and i think if if he lacked any motivation this re-motivates him mm-hmm. because he may have been buying into his own hype like hey i'm just i just fucking act out Tyron Woodley and I knocked out fucking Ben Askren. Look at me. I'm the fucking baddest motherfucker on the planet. Mm-hmm. Eh, not really, but you know, we'll see. I'm I'm I just think it's a good thing for combat sports just having them around because he's out there, he's getting paid, other people are getting paid. 
he's poking the bear with like Dana White, even though Dana's like doing deals with his brother. So it's mm-hmm. whatever. I love it. What else? Uh, some numbers came out by um, Endeavor, which is the parent company for UFC and I think professional bull riding. Um, for numbers last year in 2022, and they're apparently record revenues. Um, actually, bull riding apparently was super popular too. Um, something around 1.3 billion in, in revenue, which is up a couple hundred million God. from 2021. Yeah. Um, all 21 UFC events with live audiences sold out, continuing um, the streak they had going, which was like 29 events total now. It, they posted their best sponsorship year ever in 2022. Um, and the fighters and, got a, a huge portion of that, right? None, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, the they, fuck they, you, fighters. You're dogs. You're uh-huh. fucking meat. Um, UFC is a huge growth in, in digital uh, um, media, such as TikTok, Instagram. Their social media accounts now, they have over 220 million followers combined. Um, and I guess TikTok blew up because everybody's on fucking TikTok nowadays. And they set um, 11 records for highest grossing events in arenas, including four of the highest grossing fight nights in the U.S. and two highest grossing fight nights in UFC history, both at the O2 Arena in London. So, um, and they had the biggest, highest sponsorship sales in the company's history last year. And again, the fighters saw zero so, increase. So <laughs> in here we are revenue. talking about we're worried about them, and they're actually killing it. So. Um, you know, I, I think it has a lot to do with the way they engage the pen. I think we might have said this on last show or a couple of shows ago, the way they handled the pandemic thing. You know, they were that was like all that was remember that was all that was on. They were like the only people yeah, putting on that live was the shit. smartest thing yeah. that any sport league did was what the UFC did was let's just fucking go make our own island and go have fights and fuck everybody. Like, yeah, and then go to Florida next. <laughs> of course, like it made total sense. So good for mm-hmm. them. I mean, I don't begrudge them. <clears throat> and then what they're doing with the fighters, it's like cut the high paying guys, more of the low paying guys. And at, at some point, hopefully ESPN pushes back on them for better cars, better fights. Because the other rumor I heard was that the UFC doesn't even get a cut of the pay-per-view from their pay-per-views like that espn gets it all like holy shit that's where is the incentive then for the ufc to put on good cards there aren't any right because i i thought they would get a piece of that action i know they get zero from all the other shit because it's just like you here's the content you guys pay us for the content but allegedly that they don't even get a piece of pay per view, which doesn't make sense. But yeah. Anyway, uh, should probably talk about another sponsor. Let's do it. We have, we have a new sponsor. I know. Let's talk about a little bespoke post. So, one of our most awesome days of the month is when our box of awesome from bespoke posts arrives. So, we're just going to go ahead and unbox this thing right now and tell you guys what we got. So, I got some shit in the mails. I'm just going to say and go. What the hell is that? Let me just show you this. Um, that looks crazy. I got a Damascus axe. All is this, right. Is this like in case of, you know, the zombie? In apocalypse? case there's a Viking war, <laughs> I am prepared. And go. I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and I'm ready to be a Viking. You probably That's... does that do you hang out with that axe while you play that? Do you like stroke it? Uh, <laughs> I do things. Bingo. I do okay. Things. So that that's not one of the boxes, but they also have other things that you can buy on there. So then there's another thing here. I've got this also pocket knife. I got this Ooh. Damascus pocket knife. It's really sweet. It's hard to see the the grain in that. I'm going to be posting pictures of that so that's another option of a box that you can get and then the third one on the uh, semi-normal side is you can get a nice sweater oh. and a cool bar of soap it's charcoal and peppermint <laughs> smells pretty fresh pretty sweet nice. so so after you do all your viking shit you can get clean and be cozy that's with right. your sweater your, your soap and your sweater dabbing bitches and whatnot so anyway 
while I resheath my stuff. You want me to keep going uh, with yes. some news? No, no. I mean, Just with keep reading. the rest oh, of the points. Got you. Your bullet points. Uh, got you, my bullet points. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. There's uh, new boxes every month across a ton of different categories, so it doesn't matter what you're into. And each box is valued at around $70, but you only pay a fraction of that price, which is free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. They make it real easy. You can just you know, go crazy if it's Christmas time or take it easy throughout the rest of the year and just order shit for grandma. You know? That's right. Like an axe. <laughs> That's right, because grandma <laughs> needs a Viking axe to fuck shit up. So get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and our code MMA20 at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code MMA20 for 20% off your first box. Boxofawesome.com, code MMA20. Get some. They got a lot of cool shit. They do. I I like knives and axes and all sorts of stuff. They have like alcohol boxes, uh, it's pretty in depth and semi cheap and good quality stuff. Oh damn. They have like a weekender bag. That looks nice. Yeah. You can you can never go wrong with with a bag, you know, if you need some shit. True that. Um all right, back to the show. Mm-hmm. My last piece of news, you know, good piece of news, but weird piece of news maybe. I don't know. Um remember Kane Velasquez and all the stuff with the sun? Um yes. that weirdo guy that was Free Kane. Well, supposedly molesting him allegedly um judge ruled a couple days ago um now it's happened yesterday as of this moment um that uh, harry gularte um was charged and is going to be um sentenced uh in the next few days and because kane's son apparently you know testified in this hearing so shit's going down i don't know if this is going to affect anything that happened to kane but the man who Probably did not. the alleged molestation is going to get his due. And you know oh. how they feel about this in prison. So they fuck those guys up. If you're yeah. a pedophile or you do anything to a child, more than likely that guy's going to get killed uh, within the first, I don't know, three months of being in prison. They fuck those guys up as, as well they should. So uh, it'll be Alleg- like allegedly. Street just- no, there's not allegedly. They get fucked up. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> so he has that to look forward to. We, can, so. we cannot confirm or deny this. No, fact. I can because <laughs> I have a degree in this and okay. uh, I know this for a fact that happens. Okay. Okay. So Matt uh, is not getting the hint. Hint, hint. <laughs> no, I'm not getting any hints, Ingo. <laughs> People get fucked up. Yes. Back in the old days, guys like this would just disappear. They would, yeah, they yeah. would. They wouldn't even make it a prison. I mean, like, where did that's that what guy Kane go? was trying to do? <laughs> yeah, well, he, did. But his he wasn't shot successful. Was not good. No, like I'm shooting here, but I aimed over there. High speed chase shooting guns is not really like tactful. I would. No, say. I wish he would have just done it with his hands. Yeah, it would have been much more satisfying for everybody involved. So, uh, I saw there were a couple of fight announcements. We got Charles Oliveira versus uh, Benil Dariush, UFC nice. 288. Uh, May 6th. I like that fight. It's a, it's a tough fight. Pity. Yeah, it's probably 60 40 towards Charles, but love it. And then Dana White was saying Alexander Volkanovsky versus Yar Rodriguez should happen next. Okay. And then uh, Alex can get a rematch with Islam if he wins that Yair. Makachev. But I think, yeah, I think Makachev needs to win a fight too, because I think he wants to have both guys go back to the respective weight class. Well, really, it's Alex to go back to his, and then they both need to have a fight and win before they can, we can even think about a rematch, which is good, because we don't we don't need that fight again. Like fucking, both guys just stay in your own fucking pie weights and go at it. So yeah. anyway, and then I saw. Jessica Andrade, you know, she just lost recently to Aaron. Was it Blank? Oh, fucking names. Blank Field, Blanche Field. There we go. And she said a wardrobe malfunction played part in that loss. Like mm-hmm. she is from Brazil. She does have an OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's kind of a weird excuse. No, 
like uh my I mean, titties came out there's been complaints of that like they need to do some kind of changing to the i mean what can you really do though like how i don't know what you can do like it, you'd have to go uh almost like a mini rash guard like full body suit they did that for a while i'm not yeah it's, i don't think it's good i don't think it's good for the sport i think you need tits out and if a uh, nibble comes out so be it like mm-hmm. who are you offending herself <laughs> well apparently I, I don't know since her only fans clothes but uh i don't know it's neither here nor there let's do a little tweet a week sliving some shit up well these are uh apparently a little fat laden but oh jesus i don't know if i could play the music but we're gonna go for it and then if i have to edit it out we'll have to edit it out a little barstool sports reverse but still pretty fucking impressive it's almost like if you've got chris farley on a tram that is impressive he's doing fucking work man pretty solid so you had that one and let's see what the second one is oh jesus you know here you go it's a thriller Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I can't believe the amount of air this lady got. <laughs> like she's doing the frog. Like, ah! That's pretty impressive. Got launched right over. I mean, yeah, it could have like, been worse. Uh, like, right. If that fence was like a foot shorter, all these people like down here are fucked up. It's like WWE. It's like, come and look yeah. out below. I mean, her back isn't going to feel good from landing on this. Oh. oh but yeah. hey. She's wearing a protective brace. She yeah, she's it. got gear on. I'm sure she'll walk again. And then uh, let's close it out on this. So I want to be live. Oh, geez. Oh, that's funny. Hang on. <laughs> we, need, we need volume. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that splash, this is like when I take a shit after I've eaten 32 pounds of meat. I could watch this for days. I don't know how she fucks up, though. Like, did she try to stop and then came up short? I think she tripped and tried. She tried oh. to launch, launch herself, and, but she tripped. She's, I she think she's it. wearing a thong. Probably. Not good for her. <laughs> good for Seriously. her. Seriously. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. I could watch that for another 20 minutes. I, mean, I think that's what I'm going to do later. Uh, KO of the week. Sure. Uh, Mario Spujanowski getting into the action. I'd probably go with no sound on this because I'm not quite sure. He's not purple. No, he's just, uh, there in a red and white. And oh, he's gonna throw an uppercut. Started uh, right there. Bam. Bam. Bing. He, he looks good. for the road. Yeah. Looks good. He slimmed down a little bit. Do a little weigh in pick, a little Heather Heat Hardy. I, don't, I like average ladies doing work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she's doing work. I'm just saying. Big fan. Yep. Uh, knowledge. You got knowledge? Uh, no, nothing this week. Sorry. I, what do you have? Oh, oh, the Mandalorian starts back up. Season three starts, I think. March 1st, that's tomorrow or mm-hmm. today when the show comes out. Sorry for the technical glitch. We are back. That's right. We were talking about Mandalorian. What were you saying? Season oh, seven. Season, uh, season three starts uh, today, March 1st. So okay. Check that out uh, if you haven't seen it. It's pretty fucking good. And then here's Knowledge. Here's the gay test. It's like, if you see Spider Man, I've got bad news for you. Nah. <laughs> Guess that's what, funny guess what i saw spider-man i did too until <laughs> until i read that and then i didn't see spider-man anymore. yeah i'm like i didn't see anything i'm not, I'm not the yeah. gaze yes and then this one's interesting as i will we'll close on this so this university posted this it said hey are you pleasuring yourself with nicotine uh try masturbation instead masturbation is a safe and healthy alternative to vaping and other forms of nicotine. Try it today by yourself or with a friend as a healthy way to relieve stress. 
I'm like, where is this fucking? Uh, Let's go there. That sounds amazing. Nebraska University Health Center by Nebraska Medicine. Okay. I got a bunch of lady friends to fucking whack off with. <laughs> yes. And we should probably shut it down before we lose all uh, hope of happen. anything. <laughs> yes. Um, that has been this week's edition of MMA Nuts. My name is Ingo Wiggle. I'm Matt Griffith. Thanks for playing.